y Faruma, Bomania, y Rakata, Tujaka, Malika, Ka, Jaka, Malika, Ka, Atolo, y Faruma, Bomania, y Rakata, Tujaka. Miigwech. So please be patient. Um, this is a, a very large mural. If you like, you can take some time to walk around the mural. Uh, there are many, many stories there, and uh, I'm sure that you'll have a wonderful time even conversing with the artwork. I'll see you shortly.
Bill. First of all, I gave my thanks to the, for being invited here, and I give thanks to the people of the Mississaugas, you bet it, for allowing us to be on their land, giving us permission, and to allow us to uh, uh, have the dedication for the uh, wall murals that are uh, that you see on this uh, land and the water plant that's going to be uh, placed here, surely they, they got the permission from the uh, uh, Mississaugas. So I ask the Creator and all those that have gone on before to remember, uh, to help us remember the women that worked here and some are not any, uh, with us any longer. But for all the artists that are here that did the hard work that was uh, needed to build these murals and all the uh, hard times that they've had even as recently as the storm that passed a few weeks ago and more work had to be redone and we have the constant surveillance of the uh, of the murals and we thank you you artists that go around uh, um, tagging different uh, 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 walls and that that you've left this one alone it's really uh, appreciated by all the artists and all the members of the community and we thank our uh, uh, men in blue, oh, the yellow uh, vest, <laughs> for also keeping vigil in the park. It's a much nicer place to be when you know there's safety there and uh, adding beauty to already what is beautiful here is really really very good. So I give thanks to Creator for all this and allowing uh, allowing uh, the new credit, uh, Mississauga's a new credit for uh, giving us permission to, to be here, to make this dedication. So if you join with me in a minute here and we'll, uh, we'll uh, say a prayer and then have a few minutes of silence because I know many of you will do it on, on uh, Sunday, but some may not be able to go anywhere or forget. I wanted to also remember that this is a day that we uh, uh, want to remember uh, a good thing that happened with all the freedom that we have to do these things. And it's because of the veterans that have, uh, are here with us who went over overseas and many didn't come back like my father. And so we remember them on, on Sunday, but today we're going to save uh, a moment of silence for them so that they'll be recognized along with this memorial. Oh, be good.
Sem nu to, mi vaš nogu kad je bilo. Nad mo tiskem, eno kiti komad, mnogo je dobro da je od. Sem nu ja vat ke vino, tvoj man, kao se to vat man. Mina mi reske, mi ne vaš da vino man, ki je tiem da komad, kao kao se to vat, kao je ti ja ja, mi daš nogu mi vaš kad je bilo, mi vaš, mi vaš, mi vaš. Thank you. Councillor Kristen Wong Tam, it is an absolute honor and delight to be here with you today. Um, we always need to start off by thanking our hosts, uh, the people of Mississauga New Credit. Um, you know, behind you stands a very significant piece of art, and it's not necessarily just something to beautify our communities, but really it's a way of celebrating life, and in this case, Aboriginal life, and celebrating Aboriginal life in Toronto as well as Canada. The conversation to create an art project here in Allen Gardens began um, not necessarily because we wanted to create an art project, but it began because there was going to be a construction site um, located right in the heart of our community. And the downtown east is a community that I'm really proud to represent. Not only is it a beautiful historic community with a lot of wonderful people uh, who live and work and play and study in our neighborhoods. But we also wanted to make sure that when we do when we do construction projects at the City of Toronto, I'd like us to think about the ways we can give back to the community while we're on site building. What you see behind you is a very significant collaboration and it's a story about community building as much as it is a story about art. And uh, the artists uh, coordinators are going to come forward afterwards and they're going to tell you about their process. And I think that it's really worthwhile to sort of get a sense of how large this project is. It is literally two football fields in, like, in size in terms of dimension, 719 linear feet. That's over 5,600 square feet of boards. Now, that's a lot of paint, and that's a lot of hands that needed to put um, paint onto those brushes. And if you have ever tried to even cook with five people in a kitchen, I think that that sometimes is complicated. There's a saying, they say there's too many chefs in one kitchen. In this case, there wasn't enough artists to do the work. Um, and, uh, and they were able to thread together this amazing story that will stand here for the next three and a half years. I want to acknowledge certain dignitaries who are here today, uh, people who are part of our community. And, uh, and I will then say thank you to uh, a number of people who are part of this project. So first of all, I want to acknowledge the presence of Ryerson University. I want to also acknowledge the presence of our uh, agencies who've come forward, who I know uh, are here, uh, many of them serving our Aboriginal communities, uh, as well as uh, significant uh, property owners, as well as our residents, uh, both from uh, sometimes rooming houses, our TCHC buildings, as well as, uh, as our shelters. I also want to acknowledge the, uh, our fine officers from 51 Division, and it's all about creating collaboration making sure we have open dialogue so we can champion our neighborhoods together to keep it safe and to keep it clean and keep it beautiful and to make sure that it's affordable and inclusive at all times. This mural project would not have taken place without collaboration and the story of collaboration is a story of open dialogue and community building and open dialogue and community building doesn't take place unless you are very good listeners. I'm a little bit of a talker today and I have a long list of thank yous, but I think it's really important for me to name people who are involved with this project. And if we are able to tell our story well, the story of the process of building beautiful mural art in Toronto, perhaps all the other construction sites that you see in Toronto, our friendly dog, Perhaps all the other construction sites that you see in Toronto, either privately owned uh, with developers, and we've got a few developer friends who are here today, and uh, both Diamond Core and Easton Group, as well as City of Toronto owned construction sites. We have to do better when we look at how we are beautifying our neighborhoods. And we know that when neighborhoods are beautiful and there's pleasure in place in our neighborhoods, people want to stay, they want to celebrate those spaces and they'll cherish it, which is why we are not seeing vandalism and graffiti. If this mural can withstand Sandy the hurricane, 
and take 20 boards off of sand, uh, 20, 20 boards, the remnants of that, that hurricane took off from our mural and quickly put back on, on with the hard work of our, our, uh, our co art, artist coordinators, uh, certainly I think that it can withstand just about anything, uh, anything that the city can generally throw at it. I want to acknowledge um, the collaborators who came together for all my relations, uh, it, the, the name of the mural. We need to say thank you to our elders, Elder Alex Jacob, Elder Dorothy Peters, Elder Andrew Wellesley. The elders came together to tell the story and the people, namely the artists and the youth, youth who listen, they took those stories and gave it visualization and it, and it gave it life. And uh, we know how important the, the, this history of oral uh, storytelling is in the Aboriginal community. And I think the rest of us who are not part of the Aboriginal community can probably also learn from that. This project would not have happened without our artistic coordinators, award-winning, nationally recognized artists, Tannis Nielsen and Philip Cote. They have worked tirelessly. Now, I can have an idea, but that idea will not transform into action without people and hands on the ground. And I can tell you right now that the artist coordinators have worked tirelessly, but they've also given themselves selflessly to this to this project. They taught people how to paint if they didn't know how to paint, and they brought people together. And, uh, and they were very, very patient and very, very giving of their time and energy. And they've given above and beyond what we could ever be able to reimburse them for. And this is now the testimony to their work. The community artists who came together to help tell the story and there's a lot of them, so you're going to have to forgive me. I'm going to read these names, but I want you to sort of stand and, and, and think about who they are. If you're here, I want you to raise your hand, or to, if you're shy, um, just nod and know that we're here to acknowledge and thank you for your work. Rebecca Baird, Adrian Corey Charles, Graham Curry, Paula Gonzalez Olsa, Cote Harper, Stephen Henderson, Gary Johnson, Niall Johnson, Complex, uh, Brad Laducer. Gwen Lane, Lindsay Lickers, Angela Malley, Amanda Murray, Natasha Naveau, Shelby Rain McDonald, Ron Razor, Judy Room, Honey Smith, Rosari Spence, Brianna Stone, Isaac Weber. They all deserve a big round of applause. Thank you so much. Our artists worked under conditions where the weather took real, literally all four seasons. What began as a sort of a winter discussion turned into a winter planning stage project and then it became a summer installation and execution under the hot sun. When you and I were enjoying our summers off, they were painting for you and uh, well into the autumn and then finally into now close to winter. Uh, the, our community agencies, our community partners stood up and they said, yes, counselor, we want to do this. And, uh, and I have to say from the bottom of my heart, from Melissa Wong from my office and I, who's been the quarterback of the project, you've been seeing her name everywhere on every single email. Thank you, because without you, this would not have been possible. And that's the Native Women's Resource Center, uh, Crystal Mellon, Denise Booth, Ms. Whitbeek, Thunderbird Development Corporation, Nancy Martin, Jennifer Abbott, Anna Schnabe Health Toronto, Elder Dorothy Peters, and many students, the Association of Native, Native Development in Visual and Performing Arts, our trustee for the project, Council Fire, who generously donated their meeting space, and I know the meeting space in this neighborhood is a, is a scarcity, St. Luke's United Church, and Joanne Mastria Ani for the use of the church space. And, um, you know, when we talk about community collaboration, we went across the board. Residents, uh, business pro property owners, business owners, we wanted everyone involved. Uh, the City of Toronto has a number of other partners to thank, including technical service staff Oscar Arella, Cliff Chu, and Tony Pagnelli. Uh, CML, CNM McNally, uh, uh, excuse me, CNL, CNM McNally Construction, they've been fantastic. And if you have any noise complaints or any complaints about dirt, they're right behind the boards. <laughs> and of course, they were very, very gracious in trying to help protect the boards uh, once they were up. And of course, EXP Consultants. As you can tell, not only is this a large art project in size, it is a large part art project in scope and in terms of partnership building. 
And if we are going to build a fantastic community together and build on top of what we already have, I can tell you that these community conversations will have to continue. So I want to thank you for being here, and I want to welcome to the front of this, the microphone uh, Philip Cote and Tannis Nielsen, who will now tell us about the project and the stories behind there. Okay. Coordinators to decide how those murals were going to get designed. There was five murals here. So one was about the land, so history of the land. One was about all our teachings. Another one was about uh, the murdered and missing Native women, so a memorial. Uh, there was a wall about community. I'm just trying to see if everybody's here. I don't think our, our whole team is here today. Uh, there's a part of our team here, some of our team over here. Come up to the front team so everybody can see who you are. Uh, and also, the, there was, uh, the last mural was about the water, the teachings around the water. So in, in these times, in these times, yeah, see, it's great to have everybody here together. I even want our volunteers to come up to the front, please. Everyone up here. Um, you know, it's really important to have a community and, you know, when I think about community, I think about my family. And I think about my family, so I really like to look after my family if I can. And that's kind of what happened here. Like, we got, we became like a big family working together. Not everything runs smooth as, uh, you know, in fam big families, they don't always run smooth. But everybody stuck together and they finished the job, and I think that was really important. And I think some of the things that, you know, we wanted to say visually, in our storytelling, and that's what it's about. It's about First Nations people getting a chance to tell their story. We can't tell the whole story, which would be great to do someday, but uh, this is a beginning, and I think it's a really important beginning. And I think I'm just going to let Tannis do a li little bit more talking, and I'll finish off after she's finished. <laughs> I'm not as good at speaking off the cuff as Phil is. I have a really bad memory, so I have to write like every little thing down. So. I researched on Google that a five minute speech is approximately one and a half pages. So if it's wrong, don't blame me. <laughs> um, but before I begin, I want to, before I begin to introduce myself, please let me acknowledge how great it feels for me to be here with you all and to witness the beauty of the reason, says Point to Mural of why we're all gathered here today, the reason of which is to show and honor and give recognition to the indigenous nation of our present geographical location, Toronto, home to the Mississauga Anishinaabe, whom I would like to now give thanks for allowing me the privilege to be here. It's as a visitor to this territory that I now give thanks, because I'm not from Toronto, but I've lived here 22 years. My indigeneity is of a Cree, Métis ancestry from St. Louis Duck Lake, areas of Saskatchewan, and Red River, St. Peter's, Piguest, Manitoba. I'm also half Danish. My father's ancestry is from Denmark. While indigenous processes are not universal in nature, it can be said that a commonality amongst our people is found in the process of our providing introductions. So by first giving recognition to whose territory we're located upon, and then to name and define ourselves in relation to our own ancestral lands. I feel the importance in doing such is to provide you the context of which I'm speaking. And by sharing and asserting my own cultural geography, it's my hope that you may come to know who I am as an individual, and that by you knowing that my context comes from a particular ecosystem, an ecologically based consciousness, an ideology that's from the land, you may be better able to grasp that which I may be trying to get you to understand. Making an effort to share and understand one another or to learn about each other's individual contexts and cultures has become increasingly important in this globalized world, where the quest to maintain or give privilege to only one dominant culture has become the norm. It is this norm, the dominating privilege, that has often been sustained or sus supported at the demise or expense of an Indigenous loss. Internationally, Indigenous peoples have suffered much, yet still we continue to give, for we are very rich in spirit and in culture. And it is in this spirit of giving that we have come here today 
to celebrate the mural we have created for the community. This mural is a grand visual narrative which depicts the rich cosmological understandings of the indigenous peoples of this territory. The title of our mural speaks towards the indigenous concept of all my relations. When we say all my relations, we are recognizing and honoring our interconnectedness, our relationship with the sacredness of all living things. Under the great spirit, humanity, the animals, the plants, the minerals, the stones, the winds, the waters, the sky, earth, and moon are all interconnected and dependent upon each other for living a good life. As such, our relationships need be based upon notions of reciprocity and renewal so that we may maintain a harmonious, healthy balance with all of life. In the process of creating this mural, that thematic remains central throughout. My project partner, Philip, would be often heard to say, this is much more than a mural project, Tannis. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he meant by saying such that during our process, we were continually being presented with the lessons, the teachings behind the term, all my relations. As it was only by sharing our blood, sweat, tears, and a whole lot of love that we were able to work together as relatives in achieving what we've done. The value in this is more than financial. When we look at the positive impacts this mural has already had on community, we can clearly see its value in social capital. But during our mural project, residents of the neighborhood often engaged us to provide encouragement and sometimes even resources such as water and food. In this type of daily interactions with the community, we were developing new positive relations, and we hope that the mural continues to serve the community in this function. That the mur mural will serve as a community amenity that will continue to provide the opportunity for recurring interactions, the result of which is likely to build an increased social capital. By promoting this type of community interaction and engagement, we hope that our mural may inspire a new type of social environment within which other positive changes could take place. Changes that can lead an individual towards understanding that we are all related, we are all interconnected, and that as individuals we are able to come together through our difference in order to, to increase a renewed sense of community and humanity. I am really thankful that I was able to take part in the beauty of this process. Thank you. I think I want to go back a little bit to talk about this idea of community because it was really important uh, that it was something that had to be learned and experienced to be a part of this project. And uh, I know I learned a lot here working with all the different personalities and working with the weather because uh, I don't know if some of you remember how brutal this summer was, but it was very hot and humid this summer. And we were out here every day in that heat. So we were making sacrifices personal sacrifices of comfort and uh, you know sometimes to get ahead sometimes you do have to sacrifice your comfort and I think that's what all the our team did they all worked out here through the summer sacrificing their comfort so that we could tell this story and it's not often that you get a chance to tell a story in such a big way because this the story is going to be up for three years and I think that's pretty incredible and you know, when I think back about myself in, in a personal way, I was trying to imagine what uh, Morisot would say if he was here. Norval Morisot, the artist. And uh, because the story that I told here was about a very similar way of looking at the world. And uh, he looked at the world that we are all connected. And, uh, you know, if, you, if you've seen Morisot's work, you'll see that there's a black line around all of his images. And that black line represents the beginning of the universe. And in, in a way, we're all connected with that black line. And so when you say all my relations, or as we should say it uh, for the mural, is nin din nawe magani duck. That means all my relations. It means we are all connected. And quite often you'll hear elders or when people pray, they'll say all my relations because they're recognizing everything. So all the plants, all the life that's all around us, all the people, we are all connected in some ways. And I think it's really important to acknowledge that, especially in these times, because things are changing right now. And I think it's a chance for us to really push things in the right direction. You know, there's lots of stories 
about 2012, you know, how there's calendars endings and they're making lots of movies about the world ending and all that. So I think it's really important to think that uh, maybe it's not going to end. Maybe it's the beginning of something new. And we're at the beginning of something new. And, and I think it's important that First Nations people get a chance to tell their story. And, uh, and I think it's also important that I might be able to give some of the, our team members a chance to get up here and talk. Because we all have a little bit of this story to say. And I think uh, the thing that inspired, uh, I would really like to get the uh, coordinators up here to talk about their mural a little bit. Talk about the stories behind that mural and what inspired them and how they uh, managed through this whole process because uh, not all the team was here for four months but uh, a lot of us were here for four months to finish the mural and there's still a few things that need to be done yet but because the weather has changed we'll probably have to wait till springtime to do those things um, so uh, I'll get uh, who would like to volunteer of our Hello. coordinator? I wasn't expecting to do this so I'm not very prepared <laughs> Um, so yeah, we, uh, I'm a coordinator, I was the coordinator for the water wall, um, which was uh, part of Seven Generation Image Makers at Native Child and Family Services. Um, we were actually very lucky and that's kind of, I think, a big theme is having a lot of the other organizations partnering with us to help provide some of the things that we maybe necessarily not have had right off the bat. Uh, we were really lucky in the fact that we had a space to work in when we were doing our preliminary sketches and um, you know had supplies that are at our disposal to do those things. Um, so we were really lucky and, and I think that's really important too for the youth perspective. We want to offer them as much as we possibly can. Um, so basically our, our uh, process was kind of going along with everybody else. We did a lot of sessions with the elders in the beginning with all the other groups. Um, so um, then we took it upon ourselves to uh, invite Dorothy to come in and do some more water teachings and we also invited the seventh generation um, midwives to come in and talk about birthing and the perspective from the women, from women um, so that we could include it in, in our teachings uh, and to include it in our imagery. Um, so we basically did a lot of really, we did a lot of preliminary, preliminary work for that and um, uh, so we kind of did a large scale to small scale, large scale to small scale, large scale to small scale. <laughs> And then, so just to get it right, so um, then we kind of had our mock up in the end, and that's kind of how we got to that. Um, but yeah, and it was it was a good process. It was a really good learning experience, and I've, I've personally never been involved in a project that's been that big. I've been involved in big projects and big mural projects, but nothing like this. Um, so I would I take my hats off to Phil and to Tannis for being able to coordinate and wrangle us all up to get the job done. So, <laughs> which <laughs> the, we don't have all the coordinators here. I should just at least mentioned their names. Paula Gonzalez was in, responsible for the uh, community mural which is over the southeast corner. Southeast corner? Yeah. Southeast corner. And then we had, um, we also had, um, let's see if her name's on here, Judy Room. She was uh, another coordinator. She was for the east wall and that was for the native women's, native women's who are missing and murdered native women's memorial wall. And for the uh, north uh, east corner or side of the wall, or at least it's the north side, um, that was uh, Natasha Nouveau. And, um, and for the, and of course, Lindsay was the one that did the wall right here, was the water uh, teachings wall. And uh, I'm the coordinator for this wall right here, which is the history of the land. And um, so these are basically, these were the leaders, and they were, they were the ones who put that idea together for their mural. Now, normally, like on a big project like this, you don't usually give uh, the free run to give people to do whatever they want to do, but you now we had a lot of um, confidence with the people that were selected to be coordinators, and uh, I think they did an excellent job. And uh, I think um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my mural here. This whole story here is a Anishinaabe story. It's, uh, it's the it's the history of the Anishinaabe people, and it begins with the beginning of the universe, and it and it ends with uh, that uh, kind of uh, dip in the in the front there, with the two graffiti artists. We had a couple of graffiti artists working on this mural with us, and uh, I really thought that that was kind of a sign of the times that we are in. But going back to the beginning of the mural, I want to talk a little bit about Morso, and I also want to talk about. Um, uh, um, 
the book called Mashnomas Book, and that was w written by Edward Benton Benet. And uh, he's a very interesting gentleman. He, he, uh, he was the first one to coordinate uh, a First Nation school in North America, and that happened in uh, Minnesota. It's called the Little Red Schoolhouse. And uh, this happened in the early 70s. And I, and I think when you go back to those times, there was a lot of very interesting things happening because the 60s kind of opened up the doors for a lot of things to change. And the Native people were really involved in that because uh, the young people were looking for something. They weren't sure what they were looking for, but that generation was definitely breaking the mold. The people in the 60s changed everything. They called them the flower children. And uh, they connected really well with the indigenous people because we had a connection with the land. And that was something that they wanted to share. And so the First Nations people, they didn't have any problem sharing their knowledge with these young people who were interested in what we did or what we believed in and what our, our cosmology was all about. And I think these times that we're kind of in right now, is we're in that similar phase where people want to change and they want something new to happen. And I think uh, First Nations people are probably going to be part of that as well because we have a, a really, a real deep relationship with the land and uh, as our elders are kind of leading that way they show us how to get connected with the land but it's a personal choice and I think uh, it's really important to acknowledge those things that we don't have a religion or uh, what we believe in it's our belief system it's a way of life so we are very different from all the other people that have come to these shores that we don't have a religion but we know that uh, a lot of the teachings and things that we we understand actually come from the land. So when we look at our ancestors, and we look to our elders to find out about those ancestors, they start talking about how our ancestors were great observers of the land, and great observers of all the life around. And a lot of those observations, we're looking at the nature because in nature, there's perfection. And a lot of our teachings and understanding about how we are and how we're to be here is to get the, those teachings from everything around us. And I think that's what I was trying to do when I did this mural here, I was looking at those stories. I was looking at the arrival of the first man and all the animals coming to greet him and tell him who they were. And that's where our language comes from. So our language does come from the land. We have a, a, a relationship that's inseparable. And even though, you know, in the more recent times we have residential school and all those things that separated us from our culture, our language and that, those teachings, there's still a sense of that connection. Can't quite make it out, but I think a lot of people are looking for that connection. I think it's really important for us to be able to tell this story through visually. And uh, I'm hoping that we are going to have a website up. And uh, I think I'm interested in getting a QR code for all of these murals so we can put that story online and people can come by with their phones, iPhones, and press on it and they'll hear the whole story. Um, so that will require more funding. <laughs> but I think that's really exciting to have people to come by and just get the whole story even when we're not here. I think it's really important. I know uh, Kristen had a really brilliant idea. Uh, she wanted to put up a, a monitor up here that would continually tell the story for anybody that came by. That was a great idea. <laughs> so it still might happen. I think I would like to invite some of our um, our artists who uh, were part of this, just to tell a little bit about uh, their experience doing this mural and... Um, the artists. Um, at some point in time, if we can get together for a group photo, that would be wonderful. I want to... Um, uh, I know that people might be getting a little bit cold, and uh, I've been told that uh, there's a fo few folks who have to leave, but before you go, um, I think that maybe what we can do is I'd like to... Um, I'd like to give you a little bit of background uh, to the the construction site, because when you know what's happening behind the boards, that story is, is kind of interesting as well, because when we first said that they were going to set up a construction site on Allen Gardens, I told them, no, get it off of Allen Gardens. It is Canada's, uh, it's one of Toronto's oldest parks, our second oldest park, um, but also it's our significant cultural asset, and how dare you take care, take over Allen Gardens. Um, but the, the, the water main project had to go, go ahead, and they said, Councillor, if you want us to move the construction site off the park, uh, it's going to cost $1 million to relocate. 
So for those who have a million dollars who thought that we could move it off the park, it uh, it wasn't going to happen. So Oscar is uh, from the city of Toronto. He works in technical services, and this is actually his project, uh, the project that's behind the art boards. And uh, Oscar, can I just ask you to give us a little bit of technical information for the residents in the community to know what what are you doing? Why are you building this big water main project? And uh, and give us some of that details, and then we're going to wrap up. And then for those artists who want to stay behind to continue to chat, uh, I think we can do that. Okay, come on. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Oscar Orellana, and I am an engineer with the City of Toronto. I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Wongtam and her staff for allowing us the opportunity to be here this afternoon to celebrate the unveiling of the beautiful paintings that now surround our construction site. It has been a pleasure to work with Melissa Wong of the Councillor's Office, with the staff of the Association for Native Development in the Performing of Visual Arts, the artists that created the paintings, the consultant, EXP, and the contractor, CNM McNally, that participated in the mural project. Our construction project behind, uh, the, we call it the Gerard Street Water Main, entails a construction of a 1.65 meter a diameter water main, five and a half, 3.9 kilometers in length. It's a steel water main and it's being constructed all in tunnel. Uh, it's about 20 meters below the surface, starting at the intersection of Spadina Avenue and Darcy Street and traversing along Darcy, McCall, Elm Street, Elizabeth, Gerard Street ending at the intersection of uh, River Street and Mark Street that way. We have uh, so far completed one kilometer of tunnel construction uh, going east from here from Allen Gardens. The completion of uh, construction is scheduled for July 2015. We will be here approximately uh, three more years. Uh, thanks to Councillor Wong Tam Initiative, our tunnel boring machine launching site, which is this one here, has been converted into a work of art that blends beautifully with the park setting. Thank you very much. So that pretty much concludes the story of the mural and the story of the construction site behind you. You know, and if every construction site can be as exciting as this one, I think we're off to a great start. You know, the artists were not paid very well. I mean, it was really an honorarium more than anything else. And we will continue to look for ways to continue to fund not just this project, but other projects. We've got to be able to do better and more at the City of Toronto. And I know that we have some private uh, partners in our in our midst who could probably help us. Steve Diamond, who was here earlier, launched our very first Ward 27 public art mural project on his development site at 159 Wellesley. Michael Kavanoff has uh, painted hun um, not necessarily hundreds of bell light boxes with his uh, public art murals but every one of us large and small can contribute to ways of beautifying our city from picking up a piece of garbage to painting a construction board and uh, and I'll look forward to continuing that dialogue with you if there's an opportunity for the artist to come to the front of the mural perhaps we can take a photo including our artist coordinators uh, with Oscar with Melissa everyone everyone come on up I think it's fine to have a big group picture this is really a, a story about community building and uh, officers if you want to join us, let's all go there. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you very much. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.